Audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Jesus said, if you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Many Christians have an old covenant mentality. They're relating to God on the basis of a covenant that is now obsolete. And that's why they struggle in their lives. What does it mean to be in the new covenant and how do we relate to God in the new covenant? This is Set Free with Ken Legg. Hello and welcome to Set Free with pastor and author Ken Legg. My name's Phil Edwards and you've joined us for a conversation on the new covenant. What does that mean and why is it important? That's what we're looking at this week. Now, uh, Ken's written a new book. It's called New Covenant, New Glory. And Ken, you said you've written that out of a pastoral concern over what you call covenant confusion. Now, I understand that that's out there, but in the end, is that really such a big deal? After all, isn't just some sort of theological or doctrinal issue we're talking about here? Does it really make any real difference to the way we live our lives here and now in the 21st century? Well, actually, Phil, um, nearly all doctrine, when you consider it, is life-related. We actually live out of our belief system, whether we realize it or not. So what we believe is important to the way we live. All right, well, let's get some real rubber-meets-the-road stuff here, Ken. How does it actually make a difference, living with a new covenant mindset as opposed to an old covenant mindset? And you know, what is the difference? What does it actually mean? Well, of course, all this determines the way that we're going to relate to God. See, the Old Covenant was a conditional covenant. God gave a covenant of law to Israel. Now, Mm -hmm. the response of the law is works. So we talk about the works of the law. There were a whole lot of works that Israel had to do in order to stay in covenant with God and to be blessed by him. And they signed on the dotted line. Actually, you can read it in Exodus chapter 24. They said, all that the Lord has said, we will do. Signed and sealed. They made a covenant with God on the strength of their obedience. And weren't they brilliantly wonderful at keeping it? <laughs> and aren't you glad that they are the guinea pigs and not us? Yeah. Because we would, have, we would have done exactly the same as they did. Of course, the new covenant is an unconditional covenant as far as our performance is concerned. It's based upon the grace of God. Now, the law is what we try to do for God, but grace is what he has done for us mm. in Christ. What's the response that the Bible asks for in respect of grace? It's faith. By grace you are saved through faith. So for the Christian, you know, Paul said, the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me, or the just shall live by faith. So we live our Christian life believing in all that Jesus has done as being adequate and sufficient for us in order to live a life that is fruitful and blessed in the presence of God. I guess one of the things a lot of people struggle with is the whole thing of performance, that I've got to jump through these hoops so that God will be happy with me. Absolutely, and that is old covenant mentality. For example, there's a teaching that goes around that if you want to prosper, then you need to give to God. You know, Give and it shall be given back to you. So there's this kind of uh, mercenary sort of attitude that we approach God in. But, but isn't that a biblical principle, that you know, give and it shall be given to you? And press well, it, down, it, it running over a, and all of that? Yeah, it's a principle, but it's taken out of its context because what it's saying is that's in the, in, in the area of our stewardship. If God sees us to be faithful in what he gives to us, in terms of our giving it out to others, he will give us more, he will entrust us with more to administer on his behalf. It's not a question of of if we want personally more from God, we've got to give in order to get. We have already been qualified for every good thing because of what Jesus did at Calvary. You know, here's a verse, um, Phil, you know, it says in Romans chapter 8 and verse 32, God, who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? In other words, when you receive Christ as your Savior, you receive the whole package. Everything that we need for the Christian life, we are totally empowered for. So if people are trying to perform the prosperity that you mentioned before, that yep. you know, I'll have to give lots so that I'll you know, get something in return. Fasting, for example, would yep. that be a performance thing? Well, if we're trying to get something from God through our fasting, if we, if we regard it as a price that we are paying to get something from God, then it becomes old covenant mentality again. It's, it's like giving to get, whereas Jesus has given everything. He's paid the ultimate price. He said, it is finished, and now we're here to enjoy the riches of his grace. So ultimately you're saying that if you're doing those things, you are 
attempting to pay a price for something that you already have. You already in Christ. have. That's the key: is that we we already have these things. For you know, a lot of people fast to try to get more power, but Paul actually says in his prayer to the Ephesians, for example, he prays this prayer that God would open the eyes of the church that we might know what is the exceeding greatness of His power towards us who believe. And he says it's the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Now that mm. power is already resident in us. Oh, I love that verse. You yeah, know, the same power that raised Christ from the dead lives Dwells in you. In you. you know, lives in you. It's, it's not like we've got to do something to get that. Yes, it's already there. But the, the key is, do we know what we have? And and that's and, the that's beauty right. of the Christian life. The, the new covenant is one uh, exciting journey of discovering what are these riches of God given to us. Freely in Christ. And part of this wonderful journey that we have as believers is learning how to use that power, how to exercise that power, yeah. and, and understanding the authority that we have. And isn't that exciting? It is when you get those those little revelations. And, uh, you know, I'm like everybody else on the on that journey too. Yeah. yeah is, couldn't it be kind of dangerous though, Ken, that people could think, well, I don't need to do anything. You know, if it's already, if I already have this, that Christ has already done it for me. Yeah. That my performance isn't important. That's not the thing that's going to make God happy. Then I can sit back and you know do nothing. Uh, it is a danger. It, it, it is a possibility. But let me let me look at that a bit more closely. I, I wrote a book called "This Is the Life: How to Establish Your Heart in the Grace of God." Mm-hmm. It's all about the grace of God. And a pastor friend of mine read it. He said, "Ken, I agree with everything that you have said in this book." But but <laughs> <laughs> when I preached it, he said people went slack on me. They didn't pray so much. They didn't give so much. They didn't come to church so much. So, so it could be said that grace doesn't work. I said, no. What, what grace does, it actually exposes our hearts. What it does in this situation, it exposes the hearts of those people that the only reason they did those things was to get something from God. Mm. Now they discover they had everything freely. They didn't really want to do those things anyway. Their hearts were exposed. So it actually reveals our mercenary motive. Mm. So when you take the mercenary motive out of the Christian life, that we're doing something to get something from God, when you take that away, what are you left with? Why should I do anything for God? Well, there's only one reason, and that's love. Mm. What we do for God is our response to the goodness of God to us. It's a response. We, we already have everything freely. We're qualified for every good thing. Now, that's all that God has ever wanted is a love relationship. So when you think about it, everything that we're doing for God that's based on a wrong motive, we're just doing it for some ulterior motive, some secondary motive, you know, to, to get something from God, then really that's wood, hay and stubble that will be burned up anyway in the last day. And that's that change of paradigm where, you know, you might initially go in uh, to the things of God thinking, wow, look what God can do for me, the change that may be in my life as a result. You know, you look at somebody else who's had life change and think, I want that. But then you have this change of thinking over a period of time where you actually realize you're standing with God and how it's actually all about him. It's not about me. Yeah. You know, and there's that uh, the great Australianism of uh, look at me. <laughs> well, you actually start looking at him rather than looking at me. And that's really what this is about, isn't it? It's all about him, isn't it? And, and you know, we, we, we need to keep him in the, in the center. But, you know, just getting back as we, as we finish up, Phil, this morning, um, somebody once said to me, if I will do such and such a thing, and I won't say what it is, it's, it's, it's basically uh, a religious observance, mm. then I will get a special blessing from God. Mm. And I said to him, well, I'm already blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus in the heavenly places. What more can I have when I have everything? And there's this mentality that we we dangle the carrot before God's people. Do this and, and you'll get more. Now, Peter says this, His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So I already have everything. There's nothing I can do to get more from God because His grace freely gives me all things in Jesus. That's where we must leave it for today, but join us tomorrow as we continue our look at the New Covenant. Until then, remember, you don't have to carry that baggage. God wants you to be set free. Find articles and more set free podcasts in the free Vision Christian Media app or at vision.org.au. 
Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.